full screen. There we are. Well, hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Camp. We talk what you are aware. We live the changes we wish to see in the world. Man, I'll tell you, this is kind of like weird because we got a new setup today. So we're doing it on a laptop. But it's, it's not a new setup. It's actually yeah. an old setup that we yeah. haven't utilized in quite some time. So it's kind of like odd for us to see. I just saw it for me production to see myself like this. So big? Yeah, right. <laughs> I'm a little damn phone across the room. Hey, <laughs> listen, man, guys. Look at it. Yeah. First swag, man. Guys, can we talk? Mug says, can we talk for you over the comments? Top. Says Wake and Bake with Can We Talk for you. Oh, and Helen has in her hand. Hey, guys. Uh -huh. I'm, you and know me. I'm sorry to interrupt. Arizona. Can you guys hear me? That must be 2020. That's right. You can get this gear. It's a face mask. Socks, hoodie, zip up plug, whatever. Helen called. and Pete, you can get can you all that stuff at our webpage. And there's Jim right there. What's happening, Jim? Hey, yeah. Uh, I don't know what's going on. Well, it seems okay now that we've connected. You know, your audio was just really super choppy and horrible. I went on to the mm -hmm. YouTube channel and checked. It wasn't just on my end. So say something else again. <laughs> no shit. See, it seems clear now. No so shit. <laughs> yeah, it seems, it seems clear now. So I don't know what Welcome happened, but I, I think... We just restart what your thought was because we couldn't really hear you talking about the coffee mugs at all. So, but we can hear you clearly now. So, so go ahead and start over if you wouldn't mind. Oh, okay. Not at all. The changes we wish to see in the world. We are filming from Sweden, Arizona, Mother Nature. Here's Den. It's a home of my husband is not sitting next to me because he's outside. He's seeing the dogs. So, <laughs> well, I would like to show you the new swag that we got. So, my kids hate when I use that word too. Apparel out. Swag. They hate when I use it. Can we talk? Four to oh. Yeah. Arm up. Helen. Come in. The back side. I can't. We can't. Your Wake audio bit. messed Can up we talk? What was that, Jim? Your, I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. Your your audio went bad again. As soon as I click, is it only messing up when, when I'm on full screen? It seems like it. That's what's weird, kind of weird about it. I but, wonder why that is. Yeah, that's really strange because I can hear you so clear right now. But I swear, as soon as I drop, it it has this really weird, loud sound, like a crackling sound. And you break up really, really bad. Like it's, it, I don't know what it is. Well, understand. you just might have to stay on screen with us. Well, <laughs> yeah, I, let me see if I can just full screen you. I don't need myself and see if that helps. Well, that sucks. You know, <laughs> the only thing I can think of, this usually helps sometimes when we have troubles okay. with our guests. On Adam versus the man. Uh, if you go on the laptop oh, yeah. there and just leave the studio uh, and then uh -huh. reconnect in, and, and maybe it'll reset and, and help that. Yeah. It's usually what we have our guests do on our other show. All right, let me see if I can do that. How do you leave the studio? And there should be a button right there on the bottom that says leave and studio and then have Peter reconnect. Mm -hmm. And I'll do your I'll do the promotions while back in. Get out. Okay, I just Okay, I'm trying to uh, oh there it is. Okay. I'm leaving. Okay, all right. So uh welcome everybody. I'm Jim Freedom. You probably know me if you're a regular watcher. I'm uh the producer for Helen up here. And you know, in the age of the Rona. For some reason, even before that, I guess they live off grid. That's what it really boils down to. There, there have been internet issues that were slowly building uh, out of, I suppose. Uh, so, the ways you can help them crawl out of that uh, internet problems and help by funding their uh, funding everything they're doing is you can visit their Patreon page. Uh, they got packages from five dollars, ten dollars, thirty dollars. 
all the way up to $50, $75, and $100. And if you look here, uh, starting at the $30 per month, you start receiving uh, CBD products. You receive one bar of CBD infused soap made by Mary's Natural Creations monthly. If you go to the full lid package, you receive one 30 milliliter bottle of 500 milligram isolate drops bottled by Mother Nature's 10 monthly. You get the bonus clips, you get the molecules, brulic acid, facial serum, facial serum, 100 milligram CBD monthly. All these things that you get monthly, you don't have to do anything but sign up and uh, and and give the shipping address where you want it sent to, and you'll receive it every month automatically. Uh, it's a really awesome setup. If you have so you should definitely check that out. And after you're done checking that out, you can go over to their uh, Teespring merchandise. Um, if you want just some fun stuff that you can purchase, they got, oh, I forgot, as a producer, I Uh, their Teespring page, uh, teespring.com slash stores slash CWT42O TBO hyphen swag. And when you go there, they got a lot of fun items. They got masks if you're into that. They got leggings. Uh, they got a lot of stuff. You should just check it out. Many, many pages of items. And then after you're done with that one, uh, lastly and not leastly, their Can We Talk 420 main page now houses. Mother Nature's Den products like this Mother Nature's Den CBD isolate right here. See the uh, beautiful logo they have going on their new products. Definitely check these out. They'll definitely make you healthier. They'll definitely make you feel better no matter what your ailment. Even in my opinion, if you don't have an ailment, this stuff can help just keep you uh, balanced and, and, and natural. So uh, take that for what it is and enjoy uh, visit those sites and help them out. So Helen and Peter are back. We're going to see how they're doing with their audio. How's it going, guys? Hopefully that fixed it. Huh? How you doing? Hopefully better. I don't know. You tell me. Uh, well, I can hear you right now, but the real test is when I drop out of scene. So <laughs> I'm going to try something new. I'm just going to mute yeah, myself and full screen. Let's 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 you seem to happened. be our anchor in every, in every aspect. <laughs> I do what I can. All right, let's give it a shot again. Well, hello everyone. And um, we're back. Uh, <laughs> I hope that uh, our audio is staying together. Let me see if I can full screen this and hopefully not have any more. Oh, yeah. Being off grid, these are just one of many things that you have to figure out how to overcome. All you do is live and learn. So we did purchase a new thing that we, we were thinking was pulled away from our phone into our modem. We decided to do it from our computer into our modem and utilize our live streaming camera again, like we used to in the same manner, the same setup. But we're not we're working at all. Okay. Well, that's not good. Yeah, I don't know what to do here, guys. I mean, if you went back and watched it, you could see what I mean. It's not, it's really not watchable. It's that, it's that bad. Here comes. Got to figure it out. I'm sorry. I'm really sorry to the uh, to the live viewers. Uh, we appreciate your patience working with us through these technical difficulties. It's it's yeah. I don't know. I don't. I'm not sure what to do, guys. For Maybe. sure. Can you hear me all now? I I can hear you. Right now, yeah. I'll just stay on stage. Go ahead and talk. See what happens. So it's just getting worse now. You can't. I we can hear you now. Oh, okay. No, no, no. He said he can hear us. No. Right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. We can hear you clearly. You can hear us. Yeah. Yes. Now he's frozen. Oh darn. Okay. So you're just gonna stay on screen with us. <laughs> okay. And Let's they're gonna, do that. They're gonna... So today's show, we do not have a guest. What I did want to delve into today is um, I wanted to speak about how us as a society have. What was that, Jim? I didn't say anything.
Someone backstage on my phone to see if we can work on that. We can hear you. We can hear you. Uh, you were, oh, okay. I didn't hear you that whole time, and I didn't say anything, so keep going. Okay, folks. So I, I'm going to try and muddle my way through this. Um, okay. 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 So what I would like to discuss today is how we as a society have become so accepting of what the logical mind would deem completely unacceptable. So I want to go over um, some things uh, about our drug ads. We have drug ad after drug ad after drug ad. And the only time that they slowed down even a little bit was when COVID came into the forefront. And then it was COVID after COVID after COVID commercial. How to I how to stay healthy through through COVID, I guess. But now we are back to those commercials again. Um, and not one of them can I watch without just shaking my head and 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 not understanding how these ads can actually prompt most to run to the doctor to get these scripts because they're picking out th their own symptoms from the well that's what it is it's keywords and it, when we use keywords and especially what put yourself in a situation where you're not feeling well or you're sick or you got a pain or an ache or or something and someone uses those keywords that this will help ask your doctor this will help this right. will do this it, it is a subliminal message that is continual it's continual propaganda is all it is and and there our government has become a professional life. yes but this is one of the things that i want to touch on today after we go through these videos that that i want to share with all of you so we can pick them all apart is i want I, I, I want to understand and I want those that succumb to these ads to understand what they're actually succumbing to and why. Um, so that, that's what these videos are, are going to uh, point out. The first video is, is going to be a, uh, a little longer video. It is the longest video out of them all. Um, it's going to show you how we got here. How did these ads even come to be, to be every commercial that we see? So Jim, if you could go with the first one, that would be great. Strange sight. It's a TV commercial for a prescription drug. These ads are legal in most countries, but in the U.S., they're everywhere. On average, 80 of them air every hour on American television. Ask your doctor. Ask your doctor. My doctor told me. Ask your doctor. The American Medical Association, a major group of doctors, has called for a ban on these direct-to-consumer ads. But there's a case to be made for them, too. So today, we'll take a look at both sides. First, a little background. Before the 1980s, prescription drug commercials were unheard of in the U.S. Drug companies focused their marketing solely on doctors, and they didn't want to hurt those relationships. When asked by Congress in 1984 if direct consumer advertising should be allowed, one pharmaceutical executive said, The direct advertising of prescription pharmaceuticals to consumers would be detrimental to the pharmaceutical industry, and more importantly, a potentially disruptive element in our medical delivery system as a whole. And an executive at Sharing Plow, which is now part of Merck, said, We have serious concerns about proposals to allow advertising directly to patients. We do not believe it is in the public health interest. Indeed, we believe that in most cases, it cannot safely be accomplished. Needless to say, they changed their minds. At the time, there was a larger cultural shift in healthcare toward empowering patients to make decisions rather than just listening to their doctors. And advertisements fit with that trend. Drug ads started appearing in print publications, but there was still another thing keeping them off of TV, and that was FDA's regulations at the time. 
They were interpreted as requiring ads to include all the information about the drug's risks and side effects, which simply wasn't feasible to do in a TV or radio commercial the way it was in a magazine. There was a bizarre loophole, though. The ads didn't have to mention the drug's risks if they also didn't mention the disease or the condition that the drug was supposed to treat. Here's what that looked like in an ad for Claritin back before it was available over the counter. It's time. It's time. Don't wait another minute for Claritin. Claritin. I'll ask my doctor. It's time to see your doctor. Mr. Wilkin, the doctor will see you now. At last, a clear day is here. Confused? Yeah, everyone was. So in 1997, the FDA clarified that the industry could run the full drug ads and wouldn't have to give all the risk information from the label as long as they included the major side effects and referred viewers to another source for the rest. That's why the commercials direct us to phone numbers or print ads. Come for the pharmaceutical fine print, stay for the secret to crisp contact and soggy conditions. That new FDA guidance removed the main barrier keeping drugs off of television. And you can guess what happened next. Spending on ads quadrupled by 2004. And now we know the names of prescription drugs like we know the names of cars and clothing brands. Lunesta, Xanax, Celebrex, Flomax, and HGH. And as of Thursday, Lipitor. Oh, and if you have trouble sleeping, Marla has Ambien. I prefer Lunesta. Lipitor, baby aspirin, Flomax. Flomax? And some Cialis! I'm just assuming. So that's how we got here. Drug ads are now the most frequent form of health communication that most Americans see. So what does that mean for public health? Are those prescriptions going to the right people? Or are they going to people who probably won't benefit from the drug? People for whom the potential risks outweigh the potential benefits? Well, the answer seems to be both. A clever experiment in 2005 tested this by sending actors to real primary care doctors. We helped them make appointments. We generated uh, fake insurance cards. We did this all with the permission of the physicians in advance, but the physicians didn't know which of their new patients that were coming to see them were real patients versus actors. In half of the visits, the actors reported symptoms of depression. In the other half of visits, the actors said they were feeling down after becoming unemployed. The study authors called this an adjustment disorder. That's essentially a condition in which watchful waiting is probably most appropriate, and, and that, in the view of many, an immediate prescription for antidepressants would be excessive. In some visits, the actors mentioned seeing an advertisement for Paxil on TV that's an antidepressant. In others, they didn't bring up medication at all. And the doctors seemed to take patients more seriously if they mentioned seeing the Paxil commercial. They were more likely to refer patients to a mental health consultation and much more likely to prescribe an antidepressant. That may be a good thing for those with major depression who might benefit from a medication, but it's more questionable for those with a more temporary condition. For us, it typified the double-edged sword, which direct consumer advertising represents. This study and others have shown that doctors can be persuaded to broaden the scope of who gets treated with drugs, and advertisements often seem designed to encourage that. Take Androgel, it was approved to treat men with hypogonadism, that's extremely low testosterone levels due to injury or disease. But here's how it was promoted by Abbott. Millions of men 45 and older just don't feel like they used to. Are you one of them? Remember when you had more energy for 18 holes with your buddies? More passion for the one you love? Some middle-aged men don't feel like they used to? You don't say. A study looking back at 10 years of testosterone prescriptions found that only half of the men had been diagnosed with hypogonadism in the previous year. Drug ads give the industry an incentive to make healthy people feel unhealthy. Maltese is the only FDA-approved prescription treatment for inadequate or not enough lashes. And they contribute to unrealistic expectations about what pharmaceuticals can do. So what's wrong with that? Well, every single drug comes with risks. Big ad campaigns are usually for newer drugs for which not all the risks may be known yet. In the case of the painkiller Vioxx, a massive ad campaign led millions of people with arthritis to switch to Vioxx instead of sticking with older drugs like ibuprofen. Ask your doctor today about Vioxx and find out what Vioxx can do for you. Vioxx was more expensive and not actually more effective. And the manufacturer of Vioxx has recently pulled this popular arthritis drug from the market over health concerns. Merck withdrew the drug after it became clear that it increased the risk of heart attacks and stroke. 
A Kaiser Permanente study later confirmed that ad exposure was linked to inappropriate prescribing of Vioxx and a similar drug called Celebrex. So that's a worst case scenario. But there's also an argument that these ads can be good for public health. You know, there are many diseases for which people don't seek treatment. So if you can educate through direct-to-consumer uh, um, people about the fact that this can be treated, uh, you will get a better outcome for everyone. In their view, more communication with your doctor is always a good thing. And it's up to the doctor to make the right prescribing decisions. Surveys of the public have confirmed that drug ads prompt people to visit their doctor, in some cases for diabetes, hypertension, depression. These are conditions that are thought to be undertreated. And in the case of the HPV vaccine that's now recommended for all preteens to prevent cervical and other cancers, Merck's ad blitz for Gardasil probably reached more people than a government communications effort could. And whatever you think of erectile dysfunction drugs, they got men to see their doctors and undergo the required heart screening, potentially catching problems not yet treated. But the strongest argument in favor of drug ads may be the legal one. The Supreme Court ruled in favor of prescription drug advertising back in the 1970s when the state of Virginia tried to prohibit pharmacists from advertising their prices. We further hold that so-called commercial speech is not wholly outside the protection of the First and Fourteenth Amendments. The individual consumer and society in general may have strong interests in the free flow of commercial in information. It was the first time that the court said advertisements were entitled to free speech protections. There was only one dissenting justice at the time, William Rehnquist, who Ronald Reagan would later appoint chief justice. In his dissent, Rehnquist wrote a kind of uncanny prediction of the type of commercials that would come decades later. Don't spend another sleepless night. Ask your doctor to prescribe Seconal without delay. Rehnquist worried that ads would, quote, generate patient pressure on physicians to prescribe drugs and that they'd end up being advertised on television. And as we now know, for better or for worse, that's exactly what happened. Please unmute us. Thank you. I forgot to unmute us. That so we're probably, back. That was my fault. Oh, producer there. That's yep, okay. That was crazy. Right? So mm -hmm. there's 80 an hour. That's crazy. First off, why, why do we need that? And this is banned like everywhere else but here. Why is that? You got to ask yourself. Because we have freedom of speech in our country. Oh, my God. <laughs> but after watching that one, I want you to, um, Jim, bring us into, I picked out three different commercials, one for rheumatoid arthritis, one for diabetes, and one for depression. Now, these are actual commercials, uh, as is, that we see every day on TV. Um. So let's let's play those. Let's do that one one two three right in a row. Those three. Okay. Depression. Before I started taking Abilify, I was taking an antidepressant alone. Most days I could put on a brave face and muddle through, but other days I still struggled with my depression. I was managing, but it always had a way of creeping up on me. I felt stuck. I just couldn't shake my depression, so I talked to my doctor. He said adding Abilify to my antidepressant could help with my depression, and that some people had symptom improvement as early as one to two weeks. He also told me about a free trial offer from Abilify. Now, I feel more in control of my depression. Abilify is not for everyone. Call your doctor if your depression worsens or if you have unusual changes in behavior or thoughts of suicide. Antidepressants can increase these in children, teens, and young adults. Elderly dementia patients taking Abilify have an increased risk of death or stroke. Call your doctor if you have high fever, stiff muscles, and confusion to address a possible life-threatening condition, or if you have uncontrollable muscle movements, as these could become permanent. High blood sugar has been reported with Abilify and medicines like it. In some cases, extreme high blood sugar can lead to coma or death. Other risks include decreases in white blood cells, which can be serious, dizziness upon standing, seizures, trouble swallowing, and impaired judgment or motor skills. 
Depression used to define me. Then my doctor added Abilify to my antidepressant. Now, I feel better. If you're still struggling with depression, talk to your doctor to see if the option of adding Abilify is right for you. And be sure to ask about the free trial. Just go right on to the next. On and I take Trulicity once a week to activate my body to release it, like it's supposed to. Trulicity is not insulin. It comes in a once weekly, truly easy to use pen. The pen where you don't have to see or handle a needle. And it works 24 seven. Trulicity is a once weekly injectable medicine to improve blood sugar in adults with type two diabetes when used with diet and exercise. It should not be the first medicine to treat diabetes or for people with type 1 diabetes or diabetic ketoacidosis. Do not take Trulicity if you have a personal or family history of medullary thyroid cancer, if you have multiple endocrine neoplasia syndrome type 2, or if you're allergic to Trulicity. Stop Trulicity and call your doctor right away if you have a lump or swelling in your neck, severe stomach pain, or symptoms like itching, rash, or trouble breathing. Serious side effects may include pancreatitis. Taking Trulicity with a sulfonylurea or insulin increases your risk for low blood sugar. Common side effects include nausea, diarrhea, vomiting, decreased appetite, and indigestion. Some side effects can lead to dehydration, which may worsen kidney problems. To help lower my A1C, I choose Trulicity to activate my with it. Ask your doctor if once weekly Trulicity is right for you. Okay, and then the last one right here. Yeah. Stand up to moderate to severe rheumatoid arthritis and take it on with Rinvoke. Rinvoke, a once daily pill, can dramatically improve symptoms. Rinvoke helps tame pain, stiffness, swelling, and for some, Rinvoke can even significantly reduce RA fatigue. That's Rinvoke relief. With RA, your overactive immune system attacks your joints. Rinvoke regulates it to help stop the attack. Rinvoke can lower your ability to fight infections, including tuberculosis. Serious infections and blood clots, sometimes fatal, have occurred, as have certain cancers, including lymphoma, and tears in the stomach or intestines, and changes in lab results. Your doctor should monitor your blood work. Tell your doctor about any infections, and if you are or may become pregnant while taking Rinvoke. Take on RA. Talk to your rheumatologist about Rinvoke Relief. Rinvoke, make it your mission. If you can't afford your medicine, No. Okay. All right. So <laughs> these are commercials that we see every day, all day. As the first video said, 80 of them an hour. So right now, I, I want you to hold on to what you just listened to. And Jim, I want you to play the 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 satire one. Now, folks. This is what a logical person would hear, would hear from these from the ridiculousness of these pharmaceutical ads. Mm -hmm. So I want you to listen to this next video and then the last video we're really going to delve into. So, Jim, if you could do the satire video, I'd appreciate it. Are you struggling with schizophrenia, bipolar disorder, or depression? Are you unhappy with your medication side <coughs> effects? There are side effect options. In clinical studies, not all first and second generation antipsychotics give you the same side effects. I was always skinny, so I chose a side effect that would lower my metabolic rate. Now, I love these few extra pounds. When my doctor told me I could choose my own side effect, I immediately chose drowsiness. I love to sleep, and what better way to spend my day? 
Pooping while on vacation or in an unfamiliar location just isn't acceptable. Having constipation as a side effect gives me the freedom of holding it for as long as I need to until I can get back to the privacy of my own bathroom. Constipation side effect has been a godsend. Honey, you ready to go? No. No, I'm not. My wife and I ended our marriage in an ugly divorce about five years ago, and I haven't had sex since. So I chose a medication with the side effect, sexual impotence. Side effect? What side effect? All of my life, I've struggled with my weight. But now that I'm taking a medication that makes me nauseous all the time, I'm losing weight left and right. <sighs> best diet ever. A side effect you are happy with has been shown to be a significant compliance strategy for patients with schizophrenia, bipolar disorder, or depression. Patients taking antipsychotic medication may experience more than one side effect at a time. This may result in unwelcome side effects. When choosing a side effect, have a second and third choice just in case, and then ask your doctor what medication best fits your side effect needs. There are side effect options. Ask your doctor what side effects might be right for you. <laughs> well, I would say that that's pretty poignant. I mean, look at look at what we fall for. We we listen to these ads for pharmaceuticals that are supposed to help us correct an ailment, and we run to the to to the doctor for it so quickly and easily it is the things that bother me truly about those commercials probably uh, more than anything is we're taking a drug for depression that causes depression we're taking a drug to stop something but the drug causes it that's one yep secondly in mo most of these commercials it'll say tell your doctor about now wait if i've got to go to the mechanic and let him know what part goes on my car he's not a very good mechanic i don't need to go to my doctor i shouldn't have to go to my doctor and advise him as to well what poison he should put in me first of all and second of all it'll I, it, the ones that say if you have a kidney disease if you have kidney disease let your doctor know if my doctor don't know i got kidney disease why is he my doctor well it, the, the point is to to point out the ridiculousness of these ads and how we as a society as a whole take them seriously yeah. at all um it, it's 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 scary to know that so many of us do and rely on a cartoon uh telling us about how how to 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 get the hand up from our doctor and and this little pill is how it's going to work this is why i preach so avidly about personal accountability for healthcare there is no reason that we shouldn't understand the being that we possess and take care of it accordingly. We lack that so huge in this country. Um, it's it's we're dying. Well, the reason because is, of that is that we've become we've been lulled into a society of things of convenience and of ease and of simplicity. And, and working on your health and working on what you put into your body and working on how your vessel feels is work. Right. It's not push a button, open a bottle and stick a pill in your mouth and it, you get better. 
earth. That's not the way it works. And unfortunately, we live in a society where people want people to do those things for them. Right. They want people to hand them something that is some kind of miracle, whatever. Well, and we don't have anything like that. these ads and have have created a complacency in us that we're just we we we're falling victim like that. Well, the reason being and, is is a lot of it has to do with the the healthcare system that we have being right. so cookie cutter. You know, if it was privatized and we could make our own decisions on what and how do you do that? And what we don't. You, you take see? the doctoring out of the corporate. Yeah. Right. and you bring them back to the community and you come back to more of an apothecary time and you and your doctor learn about you together. And you aren't going to get that way unless you're both libertarian. Correct. That's, that's absolutely right. Um, we can't continue to allow this to happen. Now, the last video that, that I'm going to want to share with you is, is a video about um, what these commercials are actually saying to you. And I, I, I did it in this way because I want, I feel it's necessary to break it down like that. Look, I, I'm not calling anybody stupid. Please don't hear, mm. please don't misunderstand me. I was once that person that sat on the couch, looking at that box, taking 15 to 20 pills a day. Uh -oh. <clears throat> but uh, it, it's um, I know there are some of you out there that can relate to exactly what I'm saying and you find it difficult. Look, I, I'm going to back up a minute. I remember sitting in front of that box, taking those 20 pills a day, watching a movie and delving so deep into that movie, almost making it, you know, almost, almost feeling like, God, I wish that was my life. How do I change? Oh, how do know. I make this? Uh, how, how do I become productive like this person on this TV show? And not knowing how to do it. And that's what I'm trying to change here. That's the message that I want to bring is that that isn't the way to do it. There isn't anything inside that box, whether it be your TV, your telephone, or your laptop, that's going to give you the guidance that you need. You got to find that here. So you have to get to know this to do that. Well, unless you find a good podcast that you can listen to, that's that's some, well for sure. I mean, there are good choices out there, but you're not like you're saying. You're not going to get that personal growth and be able to to accomplish this somebody's no, not gonna well, be able my, to do it for you on another end of a box right right, right. but uh, my point is is if we are some of those people that actually listen to those ads in a manner well oh you know what i have those symptoms i have that symptom i'm gonna go and ask my doctor about this rather than being completely appalled at the other side of the commercial that has the laundry list of all the things that could happen to you now mind you in the first um uh, video that we saw, it, they they it said right there that they have to tell you the most. Uh, they say it's the most rare side effects, but that's not true. They're listing the most common. And I'll well, play the video. We'll see. That's that was the first video. Uh, I, that, I know. That's I mean, the last one that explains it. Yes. So so what I want to do is I want to go into the last video now that is going to explain to you what these are actually saying to you. So if you could go ahead with that, Jim, I would appreciate it. Life can be tough really tough. Sometimes you feel like you don't have a chance. But the American dream is that life is just a repetitive loop of mundane daily nuisances, and there's no hope for improvement or upward mobility at all. Instead of confronting these deeper systemic issues, 
we've developed an easy fix for these difficult, unprecedented times. Introducing Pill by Brand, an all new solution for relieving life's problems. One easy to swallow pill taken twice daily can cure any lingering hard to confront realities, big or small, easy as that. Brand's patented carefree molecular technology has set the industry standard for looking the other way. Ask your doctor if pill is right for you. They'll likely recommend it because we've lined their pockets with thousands of dollars in kickbacks. Side effects are many, including but not limited to not working at all, making your problems worse, or maybe even death. We have no idea. We have a pretty sweet deal with the FDA, so we didn't test pill as much as we probably should have, but whatever. You'll take it anyway because you're desperate. Pill. When structural inequalities get you down, just take it. It'd be a lot easier for everybody, especially you. Brought to you by Brand. Complacency is key. So that was uh, pretty poignant. You know, it doesn't play very well here on my end, so I was listening to it on my phone um, while you guys were, were listening to it. And it, how devastating. <laughs> I mean, how devastating what these commercials are actually doing. But it's simple. It's simple to do in our world. It, it, it is because of Big Pharma. Big Pharma has been successful in dumbing turning down. off our receptors, dumbing us down, and creating a complacent society of... Yes, yes, ma'am. Yeah, yes, of, ma of controllable beings. And all because we have given up so much of our personal power, mm -hmm. control over our own beings to an entity that has absolutely no regard for our well-being at all. all right. What the hell are we doing? What we're doing is exactly what they want us to do. We are laying down doing and exactly dying. What they want us to do. That's what we're doing. Yep. We're laying down and saying, okay. And we're just kind of walking through life with no emotion. And if there is emotion that comes up, it's fear or anger. What happens is that our world is, it sits back and they say, what percentage of the world is going to act this way? What percentage of the world is going to act that way? What percentage of the world is going to be act this way? So when people go, well, if they kill us all off and you're saying that they use us as slaves to get their wares done and to carry out their mission, why would they want to kill us? Well, here's the point. They've mm -hmm. done the research to know that only a certain percentage of people will fall for that. And that only a certain percentage of people will succumb to that. And those that won't, still can benefit and help them whether it's good enough or not not enough it doesn't matter to them but the ones that they can control the ones they can keep down the ones they can get the hell out of the way that aren't sucking from them that's how they do this and when we understand that that's what we live in people complain about a duopoly people complain about this that and the other thing in this country they have zero idea of what's going on in this world mm -hmm. if they think that that's the only problem we are a controllable species by yes. those that are in power, period. It don't matter if it's America, Russia, China, the Middle East. It don't matter where you come from. You are being controlled. You're being led down a path. And you're being led down the path that they want you to go down. Right. And, and keeping you sick is the easiest way to right. control you. And that is so blatant to a logical, awake, functioning mind. It's so blatant. 
and in your face and it and and it infuriates me and and i i feel completely helpless but this is why i'm doing this segment this way because i want those of you that are falling victim because that's what it is falling victim to this crime of these horrific ads that should never be ever on a TV screen. I want you to, to, to know what's happening. I want you to, to see it from a different perspective. I want to turn on a light, a receptor, yeah, <laughs> if uh, you will. Listen, take it there from this. There, there's nothing wrong. And, and uh, let us first say we're not calling you stupid. No. We're not calling you ignorant. We're not in any way, shape, or form downing you. What we're saying is this. We were there. Yes. We were there. We made every excuse that you've made. People that are on the pharma wheel, if you think that you're going to tell me anything different than I didn't say myself a hundred times and think that I invented it, you're wrong. It, we, as a human don't want to admit we were fooled. It's it to admit that you're a fool is a hard thing. It's a very hard thing for the persona of us human beings. It, uh, it, it, and and you were fooled. You were. And, and it's there's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with that. What is wrong is if you don't correct it going forward. So when you hear us sit here and go, you know, people are stupid for doing this or people, how the hell can people be so ignorant to listen to this? We know how you are well, because it, we've been there. You've been, you've been made yes. to be that way. Yes. And, and what being on coming from that side and now being on this side and now understanding, um, that there is a better way. And the closer you get to mother nature, the better off you'll be. We have the, that life that, that, that those ads promote bring you so far away from mother nature on purpose so that you can't find homeostasis or even come close to it. Um, we lived for millions of years as human beings before yes. we had pharmaceuticals and drugs yes. and we did that with the planet. Yes. And it's not that people only live to 10 years old. That's not the truth. No. That's a lie. It is. Um, this, this, this segment for me is a long time coming and it's so important, um, because we need to wake up people. We're running out of time. Yeah. There is a new world order that's coming and we need big, big changes. So in order for us to do that, we need the cognizance to keep up. Yes. So it's important. It's imperative that we don't succumb and we don't become victim or fall victim to these, these sh sh shenanigans that, that these big corporations are, are putting in front of our face. Question, question everything. When you go into your doctor interview, your doctor, remember that that person works for you. You're not the guinea pig that they need to practice on. When you go in for your blood work, Make them go over that blood work with you step by step. Understand what story it's telling. Know that each number means something. Understand what it means so that you can understand your Where body you and what focus? it's doing. Right. Do you need more exercise? Do you need more water? Do you need different uh, minerals, nutrients, vitamins? What Proteins. You need you to understand that. that. So then when your body is lacking in any one of those areas, you're going to feel it. You're going to know. Educate yourselves on the water that you're drinking. Educate yourselves on the food that you're eating. Educate yourselves. Don't just sit and, and, and believe whatever you see on these commercials because you can't it's not they, just commercials can't. it's information you're given yeah especially with this corona thing that's going around oh, guys. Boy. just think of right now you got biden saying i'm not going to debate a second time if 
the president still has coronavirus. Well, we know he's still going to have it. Isn't there like a 15-day incubation period? Isn't that when you're supposed to sequester yourself? Well, he'll be sitting away for 15 days all by himself. He shouldn't be contagious at that point in time. It, again, it's just scare you in your home. Don't leave your home, and you're not going to live if you don't elect me. And that's so much bullshit. Yes. We're all going to live. We're all going to be here in four years erecting some other retard. I'm telling you, it's going to happen. So please, just don't be afraid. Don't be fear-mongered by anything. Whether it be your political side, your medical side, your any side. So We're you not know, supposed to live in fear. Jim, I want to hear what your thoughts are on what we've watched. Uh, okay. All right. Well, I think it's disgusting and you're absolutely right in pointing out that it's atrocity that that we need to somehow figure out like i i the first video uh i'll just play it on the side here and i'll even have whoops well whatever i'll even have a uh, audio this is what this is what i hear when we when these videos come around yeah. lead to coma or death other risks include uh, uh, sugar can lead to coma or death 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 other i mean if you're taking an anti a, a pill it's because i mean i hate to i hate to minimize depression i know depression is a real thing but right. they're they're really right. tricking people into taking like general sadness and and turning it into clinical depression you know and and not to yeah, say correct. it's, it's well, a and let me sensitive tell you issue but i'll go ahead it is but let me tell you what most people do not know depression and anxiety normally are created because of a vitamin deficiency when and and we're all deficient yeah, some way, shape, or form. in some yeah. way shape or form because of the water we drink and the food that we eat yeah. but when you understand that vitamin d deficiency is one of the biggest issues that causes depression and anxiety then you can easily fix it right it doesn't have to take a pill that some guy made in a lab for you to break down and probably not get the vitamin you need anyway take it in a liquid take it in a gummy take it in a powder form get your ass outside get the vitamin d that you need yep. depression can be fixed getting a little dark there for you huh it did. Oh, it did get a little dark for me. <laughs> I said, I can't see my handsome face. I got to turn that thing on. I right know. Anyway, we, we're just about uh, uh, we well, got about six minutes left. So. I hope that this segment um, gets people thinking, gets you, you know, so many of us have DVRs. A lot of us don't even look at these these commercials or we're fast forwarding right through them. Some of us don't, you know, a lot of us off gridders, we just, you know, might have antenna service, you know, and, and we're regardless, they're there and they shouldn't be. And I really want people to not to stop falling victim to these types. What I can suggest is you listen to the whole ad. You don't just listen to the part that says you have RA, you need Risperdal. Don't read, don't that. I mean, I've got RA that's going to help that. I just heard it. Listen to the whole thing. Yeah, you might get five seconds of relief from your swelling, ache, and joints, which I can do with freaking CBD oil in a second. Mm -hmm. But if you may get them five seconds worth of relief, but in turn, you're going to get constipated. You're going to throw up. You're going to break out in a rash. Your left testicle is going to drop yeah. to your knee. I mean, lots of, I mean, literally, you're the one guy. Well, uh, I, you know, I haven't had sex in so long. I'll take a drug for impotent. You know, I mean, but that, that's, that's that how happens. silly it is. I mean, that's just how silly it really truly is. Pay attention to the whole thing. Know what, know what the, the uh, dangers are as well as the benefit. And, how, you and know, when, when, and, and 
look, if you are on a prescription medication, they all come with inserts. They all come with, with a fact sheet of, of what can happen. Read it, read your insert. Don't, and question everything. Don't just, oh, well, the doctor said I need to take it, so I need to take it. It, it, it should never be that way. Um, okay. I hope that that I, I some of say, you I just th really hear what I'm saying. Go ahead. I, uh, I think there's a delay. So just so we know that, like a two or three second delay. But I was going to say they should throw those pills in the garbage disposal. Then they can read the label. And by the time they finish reading the label, they should be glad that they threw it in the garbage disposal. <laughs> yeah. You know, it, I, I just, um, it's, it's, that's what it's going to take. It's going to take for the majority that are, are still falling victim to those types of ads to stop, wake up and join us in turning this around. This is not acceptable. It's, it, it is uh, not socially acceptable to sit at a restaurant and pass your Xanax across the table. It's not acceptable. It's, it's, yeah, it there, there's. And society is acceptable. Oh yeah, I know. But there is a better way and mother nature is it. Mm -hmm. She is here to regulate us. It is not the other way around. We need to live our lives as close to her as possible. If you're a, a, a believer in God, I am a believer in God. I am all also a believer in mother nature. I believe that we are their children. And that's the mom that I want to hear. That's the, that's what I want to listen to. Those are the words that I want to heed. Mm -hmm. um, so take that for what it is. Well, I appreciate everybody joining us here tonight. I really do. I, I want people to understand that a lot of times when we come on here, it's our passion. Mm. Just understand it's our passion. That's for sure. And if, if we sound as though we're coming across crass or beating Please on you or beating us, you up with that's our not words, what we mean. listen, it, if, I, I wish I had somebody beating me up on there with their words. I wish I didn't have to learn this all on my own. I wish I had a place that I could go and punch in www dot something and somebody was on the other end to get me through this. Well, your, your chances have, have increased by a lot. Why? Because you do have a place you can go and do that. Mm -hmm. You could go to www.canawetalk42small.com. And there are a list of services there that can help you through just That's about right. anything. You just need to reach out. That's right. I mean, we do everything, everything that you can imagine when it comes to this plan. Yes, we have a CBD dispensary online, mm -hmm. but we also do counseling. We also do uh, court support. We do uh, uh, we do opiate, opiate crisis addiction. intervention. Yes, we do all um, of these things, and and the tabs are listed. the The website is easy to follow. We we have an incorporated web uh, email service now, so it's just info at canawetalk four two o dot com. So we're very easy to get in touch with. Yes, we do have a consultation fee, but we very rarely ever charge our consultation fee because and people accept true. services. Once you agree to a service, we erase the consultation fee. Mm -hmm. So, uh, to you know, we, we're very easy to work with. We're very compassionate, and um, we do this because we've been there. We have made the changes that we wish to see. And we teach others to do the same. And it's 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 a whole new world. It's it's a whole new I was just noticing today on Facebook on how many people are fighting with some serious depression and wanting to give up and 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 the things that I'm that I'm seeing people write are just heartbreaking because it doesn't have to be that way. And those that are still on that pharmaceutical hamster wheel, it, things just seem so bleak, but they don't have to be. 
And happiness is a choice. And I want to help anyone who is seeking that guidance to get to where we are from where we were. So just go to Can We Talk 420.com and, and reach out. Ask for the help because we're here and we know what we're doing. And this is all based on our own experience and then all of the, the legwork that came after that for the research that 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 uh, and the knowledge that we, we've acquired to utilize Mother Nature in, in remedying the ailments that we suffered with that brought us to Big Pharma in the first place. We can do the same for you. So thank you everyone for joining us. And uh, I hope those videos um, out helped out and gave a little bit of a different perspective to what you're seeing every hour on your, your, on your TV screen. So you yeah, because I wanted people to understand. I wanted to right. see that. I wanted to open that eye that, and that, that third eye that we all have um, to say, wow, this, this isn't right. Um, so again, with all that being said, please uh, support our podcast by going to patreon.com backslash CWT 420 TVO and subscribe and, uh, or, and, or <laughs> teespring dot com for our swag teespring.com backslash stores backslash cwt420 tbo hyphen swag so uh jim's got everything up there and i thank you jim once again for a stellar production and please bear with us here at mother nature some more and hopefully we will come to you with it now or our video so until next time be the change you wish to see in the world thanks everybody take care of yourself Good job.